Now to make our guava wine, we will be using the following. I've got three pounds of guavas. Okay, we want to have on hand anywhere from four to six cups of sugar. We will be making adjustments to determine just how much sugar we're going to need, but we're going to have at least six cups on hand. I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Coupe de Blanc wine yeast because of its low AVB alcohol tolerance, and it is pretty decent for white wines. If you don't have it, of course, you can always use the old standby. That will still work. We are still going to be using some regular original active dry yeast and that yeast is going to be used as part of our yeast nutrient. We'll need one black tea bag and that black tea bag is going to be acting as our tannin substitute to give our wine a little bit of astringency in the back end. We're going to need a couple of straining bags. We're going to need at least one gallon of clean filtered water. We're going to need a wide mouth container, jug, jar, demi jar, whatever take you pick as long as it's got a wide mouth opening so we can get our straining bags into. We're going to need a regular one gallon carboy that we'll be using for part of our secondary fermentation later on. We are most definitely going to need an airlock with bung that will fit our secondary fermenter. This particular primary fermenter does have a built-in airlock, but if you don't have a built-in airlock, you might want to get an airlock just for this as well. It would be also helpful if you had a hydrometer with testing tube to help us determine what our starting gravity is going to be so that at the end of the process we can determine what our ending gravity is going to be, at which time we'll know how much alcohol we have produced in our wine. Also. Last but certainly not least, we want to make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized before we begin the process and during the process using your favorite food grade sanitizer of choice, either One Step, Star Sand, or whatever it is you happen to use. Not shown on this table because it's just too big to fit is a good 8 quart pot because we'll be using that later on. And that, my friends, is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now I've taken the opportunity to thoroughly wash these guavas. Because what we want to do now is that we want to go ahead and give these things a rough chop. The only thing that I'm probably going to do is remove the ends of the guava. We're not be putting those in a pot. But basically we just need a rough chop. Get rid of the part I don't want. <laughs> and go ahead and slice these bad boys up. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Surprisingly, I've never had guava that I can recall, maybe in a drink or something, but never as a eating it as a fruit. So starting with that one, I'm just going to go ahead and get those in a straining bag. And move on to the next one. Okay, last one. This one, oh no, looks like it might be past its prime. I think we're going to leave that one where it be, and we're just going to tie off our straining bags, or straining bag. And let's move this shell into the kitchen. Now here we are in the kitchen. We want to do a couple of things. One, we want to take a little bit of our water. I don't know, between roughly half a cup, three quarters of a cup. Pour that into a small saucepan. We want to drop in our tannin substitute. And we want to take a quarter of a teaspoon, quarter of a teaspoon of our bread yeast. And we want to go ahead and just put that in there. And the reason why we're putting bread yeast in the pot and we're cooking it is that we want to kill off that bread yeast. And the reason for that is that when we put in our wine yeast later on, the wine yeast is going to feed upon the dead carcasses of the bread yeast, acting as a homemade yeast nutrient. And that's why we do that. So let's turn heat on to a simmer because we want a nice out of strong tea. In our remaining water, 
we want to put in our big pot. lid back on, turn the stove on, high in this case, because we just want to bring this up to a boil. Okay, now that our water has had a chance to come to a boil, we want to go ahead and <clears throat> drop in our guava. And we want to turn off the heat on both eyes reason why we're putting our guava in hot water is because since this channel does not use sulfites, putting the fruit in boiling water will help kill off any of the wild yeast that would be on the fruit and to some degree some of the bacteria that's also on the fruit. And since we have the opportunity, we may as well go ahead and add in our tannin slash yeast nutrient substitutes. And let's let the temperature come down. Now our mixture has come down to room temperature. And I want to add in our sugar. But before I did that, I did a quick calculation to determine just how much sugar I really should put in here to get the sort of desired ABV or hydrometer reading that I want. Otherwise, I would have added in the sugar while the, while the juice, musk, was still hot. It makes dissolving it a whole lot more easier. But, calculation said three and a half cups. I'm going to, I've just put in three and a half cups and I'll take another hydrometer reading to determine if uh, the numbers are correct. Take a hydrometer reading. Okay, I started with a hydrometer reading of 1.010. I now have a hydrometer reading of 1.080, which is exactly where I wanted it. So there we go. That should give me, a, if all things being said and equal, a final ABV of about 12%. Now I've already taken the liberty of transferring our juice into our primary fermenter. And all we need to do now to start the actual winemaking process is to add in our yeast. I'm using again a quarter of a teaspoon of Red Star Premier Coupe des Blanc. Of course you can use whatever you got. Bread yeast will do it. And try and sprinkle it around kind of as evenly as possible. But since we've been dealing with straining bags, we'll probably just give it a quick little stir. Just to incorporate the yeast a bit. Put a lid back on, and before moving on to the next step, I'm just once again pointing out that this particular fermenter does have a built-in airlock. So if you don't have one with an airlock, you'll be using one where you're adding your own. Now, because this project is going to last at least 12 months, it would be helpful if we can label our creation, as I always generally like to say. We are making a guava wine. We started it on this date, and our original gravity reading was 1.080. Now, of course, what we're going to do is that we're going to leave, we're going to do a couple of things. For the next three days, we're going to go ahead, open this cap up, and give our, give our must a good, generous stir. After that three days, we're not going to do that anymore because we don't want to start running the risk of oxidation. We're going to take our straining bags out after about five or six days and uh, discard those however you want. And we will probably rack the, uh, the remaining uh, liquid into a secondary carboy and begin the process of secondary fermentation. And we'll be doing periodic rackings every six or eight weeks or so from one carboy into another to remove the liquid 
from any lease that might be developing along the bottom of the container until the wine is clear enough for our liking or it's old enough for our liking as well. Of course, you can see all of these processes in my winemaking operations playlist on my channel page. All right, 12 months later, it's now time to do the taste testing. A few particulars. DIY fermentation, guava wine, born 7-24-2022. Uh, AVB came in at, really, 11.55%. It's been back-sweetened to a level, hydrometer level, our reading level of 1.014. And, of course, as always, it's been pasteurized. Now then, that having been said, uh, during the back-sweetening process, uh, I kind of made a slight mistake. Um, Usually before I back sweeten uh, the wines, um, I will I will rack it one final last time into a clean carboy where I can don't have to worry about any re residual sediment that might be on the bottom of the carboy, and I can just go ahead and 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 use my wire whisk to degas and back sweeten at the same time. Uh, this time I was kind of in a rush. I wasn't paying all that close attention. I I forgot basically. So there was a, a very light layer of sediment on the bottom of the carboy that when I started to do the back sweetening and whisking it up, uh, all of that became dispersed. It was still fairly clear, and I, I didn't catch it, but uh, by the time I had already back sweetened it, um, um, I would back sweetened it, and then I would bottled the first two bottles, and it was while I was looking at the bottles kind of closely, I began seeing you know, little, little flakes of sediment kind of floating around, and then I was kind of stuck because I'd already back sweetened it. I couldn't just pour everything back into the carboy and, and, and let all that stuff settle down because that sugar that was added was simply probably restart fermentation. So I was kind of stuck there. Um, so I decided to go ahead and press on. I mean, yeah, I could have I could have pasteurized it and then um, poured everything back in the carboy and then let everything settle down and then you know, do all that. But I didn't have time for all that. <laughs> okay, it's time to do this video. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to say with regards to the fact that there is a layer of of sediment on the bottom of the bottle. Beyond that, I mean, if I hadn't done that, it would have been fairly clear. Not totally clear, but fairly clear. In fact, there's sediments beginning to, to walk up. <laughs> it happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crack this one open. And the reason why I decided to use this bottle... That, instead of any one of the other four, was that when I was corking it, this cork did not quite go down, <laughs> all the way down into the bottle. So I figured, hey, I'll just use this one first for the uh, for the video. Now, moving right along, let's see. Mm. Uh, mm. Not quite the same satisfying pop that I used. I, I like to hear, but close enough. Got to pour it carefully. I can probably get more than two good glasses out of it before the sediment starts to rear their ugly little heads, but we'll keep this one fairly simple. All right. Ah. Uh, now, bear in mind that when you guys see me swirl it, it's kind of like an afterthought. I'm not looking to see if there are any legs to determine its viscosity or alcoholic level, or or when you see me smelling it, it's not to detect any sort of specific aromas. It's basically just uh, something to do for me. And uh, when I sniff it, it, is it, it does it smell drinkable? Which I should say, uh, when I did my... Uh, no, it was my core and wine video. I was kind of doing the taste testing and I was making it just as simple as possible. And I, I didn't really talk about any tannin notes or acidity or or or, or, or what it tasted like in, in comparison to anything else. I just simply said it was drinkable. <laughs> I got tagged by by one of the uh, viewers out there who's kind of kind of wondering, you know, is that all I got to say about it? Sometimes you just got to keep it simple. And if this is drinkable. Great. If it's not, then it goes down the drain. <laughs> it's as simple as that. All right, enough of that. Enough being said. What does it taste like? Oh, oh, oh. The profile shot so you guys can see that I'm actually drinking it.
Huh. Okay. I think I'm going to start back sweetening it just a little bit higher, more sugar. It's okay, but that's subjective. What I'm going to say about this is this. Some of the wines that I make using some of the fruits, vegetables, roots, ours, weeds, <laughs> um, and sometimes they'll have a very light flavor. It doesn't really matter how much of the stuff you, fruit, vegetables, roots, whatever you put in. It's just that sometimes this has a very light flavor profile. Uh, some of the wines that are made, like the raspberries or cranberries or things like that, a little goes a long way because those things definitely stand out. But this one, it's kind of like an, all right, It's I'd say it's almost at the middle of the road in terms of flavor. I mean, you can definitely taste the flavor. But it's not bad. Yeah, it's, it's a, probably a tad more bit on the tannin. Uh, the acidity is about the acidity is pretty much okay. Don't think I need to make any changes there. That quarter of a lemon. Uh, uh, that I use now these days for almost all of my wines when I need to boost the acidity. I seem to be working out okay at that level. Yeah. And of course, it seems like almost always with the uh, white wine varieties, uh, probably would taste a little bit better if it would chill down a bit. This is actually not half bad. Go. Yeah, it's not half bad. I'm tempted to pour me another glass, but I've got to do the editing of this video, and I've got to upload it, and I've got to do a few other things to it. Uh, so I'm going to need my wits about it for that. But no, I think it was okay, worth the effort. I and mean, if you're really into guava, uh, this one is a, is, is a worthwhile effort. Yeah, this was a worthwhile effort. Uh, that 15.55% ABB, hmm, or if it's not going to relax you as much, <laughs> then I would probably change yeast. Uh, to something a bit uh, uh, that has a lower alcohol tolerance. Uh, and of course, as I always say at the beginning of most of my videos, um, if you don't have wine yeast, bread yeast still works. Um, but that having been said, I'm almost tempted to pour another glass, but I really have things I've got to do today. Uh, I'm going to let it go at that uh, by simply saying uh, guava wine. Kind of curious of what this is going to taste like in another year, but at the one year mark, I think it's okay. Well, there, that being said, uh, if you like what you see here, uh, please click on that uh, subscribe button, uh, get notified of uh, our future uh, uh, future videos, become a member, become a Patreon, uh, and uh, I will continue to do these on, I like to say on a more regular basis, but God, I'm so busy these days. Uh, I will continue to do these. I'll put it to you like that. So until the next video, I'll see you.